So, um, we were gonna do an action with the Climate Angels. Do you want me to talk about like exactly all of the things that happened? Is everything you're comfortable with you. for you? Okay. We're, we're, we're open to, that's fine. Okay. All right, so we are an infinity group who's gonna do an action at Le Bourget in the front. Um, there were two separate things that were going to happen. Uh, one of them was involving the climate angels and the other one was involving um, a banner between the U.S. Um, marker in the front of the Bourget and the Saudi Arabian marker in front of the Bourget to make the link between the two countries, Saudi Arabia and the U.S. being one of the most problematic presences in uh, the climate summit thus far. Drawing attention to the militarism of both of those countries, the military industrial complex, and how they are fueling climate change um, and their dependency on fossil fuels, and also um, how they silence other countries uh, in this uh, COP, in these climate negotiations. So we were going to unfurl a banner while the climate angels were going to do another action and we were going to do something at the same time. And so um, we prepared for it and I think they found us through um, cameras on public transportation in subways and as soon as we um, boarded the, the shuttle from our last train station to get to La Bourget, or Le Bourget, um, they surrounded the, uh, the buses in the middle of traffic, pulled the buses over, held up everybody, um, made everybody get off, and held some people off and some people were able to go back on. The people who were held off were detained by the police uh, and um, the ones that were able to get back on were able to get back on and go. And so it is now sometime in the afternoon, probably like two something. This happened at 12, so it's been about two hours or so. We um, were searched multiple times, our backpacks, our bodies. Uh, they took our passports multiple times. They let us smoke cigarettes. Uh, and uh, we were boarded onto paddy wagons or big vans. Um, some of them were separated by lockers. I was in a van that was separated by lockers, so I was not able to um, stand up. I was not able to see the people who I was arrested with. And um, sorry, sorry. Can I? <laughs> you were in a locker. I was in a locker. So, so inside of the the paddy wagon, inside of the van, there were compartments, metal compartments that we were all in. And in those compartments, there was only enough room to sit like this, to sit like this. And there was a mesh right here, so we could turn and look, but we couldn't see each other. We were completely separated from each other. So. Um, during that time, I was by the window, we did a head count, we try, I tried to look to see where we were going because here in Paris they have, uh, there are documents of, of the police taking us to unmarked detention centers and keeping us there. So um, we had eight people go on and we all come back to this place which is the Hotel de Police, which I think is very ironic. Uh, and um, we were what's called under control. Um, we got there, we probably waited about 45 minutes outside or underneath the covering. Um, and they pulled us in one by one. Uh, we were able to go to the bathroom if we needed to. Um, we were able to eat our snacks that were in our packs. They didn't take anything away besides our, our, our passports. Um, once they scanned and verified our IDs, which is what that process is called, verifying IDs, they uh, uh, let us all go again. It was pretty, pretty easy going. It was the one of the more harmless times I have been detained by the police. Um, and I am from the United States, I'm from Texas, and these police don't compare at all to Texas police. They were much more. Um, 
uh, much more understanding about things and some of them even thanked the people who were here because uh, they wanted they wanted to um, recognize our cause and why we're doing it.